need to scoot over. He doesn't like sitting next to me. Okay. Riding your wave, moving forward, step at a time, all that good stuff. We wanted to talk a bit on becoming a regular. Um, this is his video to talk a bit because he keeps deferring to me and then I talk. This is my video so I can let her do all the talking. So that's that's my directing the video. I have a weapon. <laughs> I have several in hand as well. <laughs> I'm better at them. This is most likely true. <laughs> Trying not to show my bad teeth. Okay, don't, 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 don't. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're not. That's the one that sliced my finger open one time. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Anyway, <laughs> see how you derail? See, see. Becoming a regular. From a third culture. From a third culture, First. from our point of view. While we ride our wave. So I'm gonna start out with, we have a personal policy when we find a place we really like, be it a restaurant, grocery store, fishing place, hiking trail, whatever, we don't necessarily take our friends or family there because all it takes is one person being an ass to ruin that place and you can't go back easily and it's an issue. This has happened to us on numerous occasions at, at certain favorite places and it's a lesson hard to learn because you really want to share the places you like and with other people. You take the person to the place you really, really like, and they loudly proclaim how disgusting they find the food and they demand a refund. The food was fine. Or they don't tip. Or a certain somebody who didn't pay their ticket took somebody <laughs> that I consider a friend to a one of those conveyor belt sushi places before the pandemic. Don't worry, we're not talking about you. And that person and the person they were with dined and dashed. They didn't tell me in advance. I'm standing up there paying my ticket and they're running out the side. And the chick ringing me up just gets this look and I was like, they did. And she goes, oh, they did. Here like, well, you go. The, Here's the rest of it. Here's the rest of it. I'm going to assume they didn't tip either. Here's the tip get out to the car and I was like, what was that? And they're like, why didn't you come? And I'm like, I don't do that at places I'm a regular at. Oh, they never offered to pay me back. That was the end of, of ever doing anything with them again, even though to a degree, I still consider the one person a friend, but I'll never go to a restaurant <laughs> with them again. Anyway, um, life in the third culture. One of the things with becoming a regular. Okay, we hike at Hesita Trail, or Hesita Lighthead, Hecate, whatever you call it. Hesita Head has a Hesita Lighthouse. It's a famous lighthouse there on the Oregon coast located between Florence and uh, Waldport. It's a great beach. It's a wonderful beach. It's a fun hike. There's a gift shop there. We go in, pretty much dressed like we're dressed right now. I'm a little slobby. Yeah. He's a little overdressed, you know? Fairly well presented. Fairly well presented. She doesn't say hi. She glances up at us, squints her eyes, and goes back to work. She doesn't say hi. We're shopping around looking at things for 10 minutes. Yeah. We've bought things there before. Oh yeah. Not from her, but we've bought things there before. We're talking about things that we like. Somebody else comes in, she looks up. I look over, it's an older white woman. She goes, oh hi! The clerk does too, to the older white woman who- First time in. here? Yeah, whole first time here, help yourself, blah, blah, blah. Comes out from around the counter and stands with the woman chatting. I look at the spouse, they look at me, we walk out. There's a reason the green book existed. No, I'm not a category for the green book, nope. but the sheer number of places we go to where you stand there at the please wait to be seated thing while they frown at you. I've never had good service at an Elmer's restaurant. I have friends that try to go to Elmer's restaurants. I do not fit what they consider to be their clientele. And they kind of look over and they kind of go to polish some glassware or something. And it's always been a problem. Or the one time we had a group on that somebody gave me for Elmer's. That was a good one. Specifically for their gluten-free menu. That's what the group on was for. That's why the person <laughs> bought it for me. We don't have gluten-free. 
I was here three days ago. You had gluten free three. We don't have gluten free. We've never had gluten free. It's on your menu. He has a coupon specifically for gluten free items for at this, this address. Yes. No, we don't have gluten free. Leave now. <laughs> we don't have anything here for you. <laughs> Literally said we don't have anything here for you. Okay. This this happens a lot. I have a lot of friends that are very Asian presenting, and it happens to them a lot. I have a lot of Native American friends. I have Native American family that you don't go to that restaurant, you don't go to that store, you're not welcome. You become a regular so that you have places you know you can trust. And when you're third culture, it's quite an adventure sometimes trying to find a place where you can be a regular. You have to test it, you have to go there, see if, you see if you're treated like a regular customer, and then just start with the pleasantries, and if it goes back and forth, you try it a second time. If it's good the second time too, chances are pretty good you might be able to be a regular. But if you get the cold shoulder going in, in spite of good reviews, uh, it's... your quest for a Mexican restaurant here in town. Exactly. We've had some difficulty finding one, which is somewhere in between, somewhere friendly. We think we finally found one. And um, we're pretty happy with it so far. So we'll be going back. But when you go to a new area, as third culture peoples generally do, constantly moving, it takes a while to establish new habits and find new locations and be comfortable in places. And it's always a bit of a challenge. One of the things that God explained to me one time, somebody had said something about, okay, this is, he, is an Anglican priest and one of the other priests had made a comment that um, if you have LGBT in your church sooner or later it will become an African American church and the explanation was simple that if an African American person moves into town one of the easiest ways to find that it's not a bigoted church is if it says LBGT friendly or has a pride flag. It's an easy way to see it's a friendly church. So if you're LGBT friendly, you'll slowly but surely get more and more African Americans and it shifts the dem demographics. I'm perfectly good with that. Yeah, yeah, that's not the problem. The problem, <laughs> or what I'm trying to communicate is that there are things you can look for besides the green book. There are things that if you're a third culture, you can look for the LGBT on a business that tells me I'm welcome there. Whereas, or I might be welcome there. Whereas a Trump flag tells me I'm not welcome there. Yeah, chances are pretty good if you see something that's it's all inviting like that, such as like a BLM sign. We're not talking Bureau of Land Management. But if you see something like that, chances are fairly good they'll be more tolerant with whatever type of culture you bring in there. It's not a guarantee by any means. Yeah. But it is a, a fairly good shot that you have a better chance there. Um, like again, it's, not, it's just a, a rule of thumb. And then, it won't necessarily find that kind of thing in some of the areas that you travel. See, he doesn't like sitting next to me. He shifts away farther and farther. And you don't have to do that. <laughs> okay, so that was life in and perspective. Next one is on saying goodbye. Knowing when to cut your losses. Knowing when to put stuff back on the shelf and walk out. Knowing when to get up and walk away. Just because this was a good place before, new management, whatever. You've got to be aware. That's the thing I find particularly difficult to do in a place, is to walk out uh, after going in. It it's just goes against my inner nature of being a pleasant, interactive type of person. It it's just very difficult for me. However, you don't suffer that same... Uh... I don't suffer that same problem. I will <laughs> walk out. Um, an example, a different example. When we first got to Portland, there was a Denny's we were going to. And it seemed okay. It seemed okay. But... Yeah. One night, because we'd go at like 8 o'clock at night after he got off work, and one night it was just a little tense. It was a little weird. We left. We, we had dinner. We left. I was like, we shouldn't have been there. A couple of days later, he's like, let's go over to Denny's and split some nachos. And I'm like, okay. So we go to go, and we go in, and it's just really tense. And he's like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, nah, no. I, I changed my mind to the, the maitre d'. I, I changed my mind. We're going to head out. And he's like, why? And I'm like, well, we'll just hit whatever it is down the road. The vibe was wrong. The vibe was wrong. And it, the vibe was wrong like three times in a row. Four nights after the vibe was wrong the, the last time, the homeless guy who'd been terrorizing everybody in there at nighttime that we had never seen 
doused somebody on fire and lit them. Doused somebody on, with doused somebody on gasoline and set them upon fire. fire. Yes. 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 English. We'll get there. English. Um, killed somebody. This is the same time a different homeless person beheaded somebody on the train right next to our stop. So the vibe had gotten bad because the homeless camps had picked up the wrong clientele for a while. You have to be aware. You have to be aware when the maitre d's like, oh, hi, you're here today. Let me see you over there, not your regular spot, because yeah. she knows who's sitting in the booth next to your regular spot. You have to pay attention. And as a regular in a place, you'll get a tip. Something will help yeah. you. You'll, you they'll, yeah. they'll let you know. Uh, another anecdote for this, it's the same thing as being a good correctional officer. <laughs> no such thing. I, I, there's no such, we, we can argue that one and you're, you're right. But to be, <laughs> to be one that's relatively safe, they have a policy there of being fair, firm, and consistent. If you can be all those three things, fair, firm, and consistent, you'll be respected among inmates because you're not favoring anybody, you're not being inconsistent, they know what to expect. That type of thing makes you irregular with them. And if something happens, they have word of something, they might suggest, oh, you might want to call in sick tomorrow. Yeah. That's which, the kind of thing you listen to. Yeah. And you can't tell anybody else they told you that either. <laughs> okay. Still moving in. That was a non sequitur anecdote, but it was yeah. along the same lines of, of... Still moving in is, even if you find your perfect place, or you think it's your perfect place, you still try other places. You have your favorite, your regular, your your regular there. I do need to address what it takes to become a regular. That didn't get addressed at the beginning. Um, so what does it take to become no, a regular? We're still working through this. Actually, I can do that under paradigm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so still moving in. We found a really good Mexican place. It it seems to have everything we want. It's really cool. It's a Hispanic grocery as well. Plus, it's a meat market and seafood market. And a bakery. Um, and a bakery. I mean, it's it's everything. It's really cool. It's got my favorite chocolate marzipan candies. Um, yeah, we were but, supposed to split that box, by the way. No, we weren't. I told you at the time. <laughs> no. You don't split the things you get. <laughs> we only have to split my things, apparently. That's because I'm not a regular. I'm only a kid. <laughs> There's still another restaurant here in town that appeals to me visually. I see it when we drive by. I'm like, well, I want to try that out sometime. We will try it out eventually. We don't spend that much money on, on eating out, so 50% of our eating out is when somebody else is buying. This That's is true. That's happened twice this year. Three times? Maybe three times. Maybe three times this year. 50% of our eating out, so, you know, it'll take a couple more years before I try that other restaurant. Anyway, Paradigm Shifts. A perfect model or either or. How you become a regular. There's a couple of simple ways to become a regular. Okay, there's a fiber store. There was a fiber store that I was going to to buy fiber for spinning. I was going once a month. I was spending 20 to 40 bucks. Every single time I went in, she didn't remember me. Just, I don't know who you are. I bought an $1,800 spinning wheel because I had a gift certificate and a credit that somebody yeah. owed me. And $300 total. So it cost like $300 total for the spinning wheel. And it's a lemon, which is still kind of irritating me. Which is sad because it's top of the line. Well known brand. Yeah, but she knew it was a lemon. Anyway, um, we bought the spinning wheel. We went in one month later and she didn't remember me. One would think, after dropping a lot of money on a, on a major purchase in a place you've been regularly visiting monthly on, like, for a year and a half, that she'd remember you. might remember you. Okay. She doesn't have that much business. Georgie's Ceramic Store down in Eugene. We went in the first time. Friendly enough. Not too helpful, because too many people, you know, they try a hobby, they, they drop it off. Went in the second time. Oh, hi! You're back! Went in the third time. Hey, what are you working on now? How'd that work out? When in the fourth time, is there anything else I can do for you? Blah, 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 blah. You want to talk about new best friend syndrome? We have a few new best friends down there. It's kind of <laughs> awesome. Sharing websites, giving advice, yep. putting out brochures for things that I like. It's awesome. I asked a question about 
um, fixing frozen glaze, and she did up a little tutorial for it. And that's how it's supposed to work. That's how it's supposed to work. We're a regular there. We missed a month because of gas prices. Oh, we missed you! Yeah, that's how it's supposed to work. If you go to a cafe, a coffee shop, once a week, and get the same order, and sit once a week, within three visits with the same barista, so you have to go in the same time so you get the same worker, you should be a regular. A barista, a good barista, a good bartender, a good waitress will remember your order. If you go in and get something different every single time, they may not connect the dots. May not. Sometimes they share information in the back. You know how it is when you work for a, a small operation. But Larger ones have too many people on too many shifts, and it's it's impossible yeah, to get anywhere with that. That's why you go to the small places. Right. Um, baristas, bartenders, and whatnot can become face blind because they're seeing a thousand people a week. So it's not the face that they remember, it's the face to the voice to the beverage that they remember. They remember the order connected to everything else. Yeah. And that, trust me, that's how I do it on things. The easiest way to become a regular anywhere, if you like a place and you want to be a regular, tip 30%. Yeah. Right? That works. It works every time. It takes two visits. The third visit, they'll fight over who gets your table. Yep. Okay? You are a regular. You're an instant new best friend. Now, why do you want to be a regular? Because they give you tips. Because, not tips cash, but... <laughs> information. Information tips. Co coffee information. shop, you need to try this new coffee. It's amazing. It's life-changing. Have you heard about this down the way? You Have find... you heard about... Are yep. you going to Oregon Flock and Fiber is this weekend? Right. I'm not going. This is the wrong time of year this year. Eh, we were going to go today. The car had other opinions. Um which is fine because I need to diet anyway and having the grocery bill get absorbed is its own issue. Yeah, priorities are priorities and sometimes they reassess yeah. themselves yeah. for your benefit. Becoming a regular is worth doing. In a perfect world, three to four visits, you're a regular. That's that paradigm, that perfect model. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you can be searching place after place after place after place and never find anywhere that fits. And that goes down to that if everybody you interact with is having a bad day, you're the one person in common. So if every <laughs> restaurant you go to doesn't work, you might be the reason. But, caveat, it might be your karma or your dharma. So when we first started dating... Oh, this is good. Listen to this. When we first started dating, he took me to one of his favorite restaurants, which was the Hobnob we, well, in Tacoma. I was going to say, we'll remain nameless, but it's the Hobnob in Tacoma. It's the Hobnob in Tacoma. I still like the place. And she slammed my cup down so hard, half my cup of coffee went out of the cup. And then she gave me a dirty look for spilling. And she took his order and started to walk away. And I'm like, I'm ready to order. <laughs> and she came back and took my order. And she's in the back and I'm like, were you dating her? And he's like, no. She brought out his food. She brought out my food. My sour cream was crunchy clear and had pork pork tie marks. marks in it. I'm like, um, can I get a new one of these? That's how they come. No, it's not. That's off somebody's plate. Can I get a new one? Fine. She storms off, never brings me the new one. Here's my corollary rule to becoming a regular. Flirt a lot. It doesn't matter. Just flirt a lot with your wait staff. <laughs> and you'll become a regular. Just don't bring your significant other there. So a couple of weeks later, he took me to his second most favorite restaurant, which was the Harvester. Another good place, by the way. I like the Harvester. First time there, I ordered lasagna. Comes out in a little boat. It's got beautiful cheese on top. He's eating whatever it was he ordered. I go like this and it's rock hard and I peel my cheese off and there is rock hard burnt crunch <laughs> of what was the lasagna underneath. And I have the cheese pulled up and she comes back and she goes, hey, can I get you anything else? And I was like, how about some lasagna? That's our special burnt crust cheesy pop. She tried to explain it. I'm like, no, I'll just, I'll just be fine. Don't worry about it. Take it off the ticket. Fine. But we can't do that. Yeah. She tried to charge him anyway. Manager had to come out. Manager's looking from him, looking from him, them, to her. Me, them, me, me. Back me. and forth, back and forth, and finally, like, fine, I'll, I'll discount it. All right, I need to side here. Now, remember the thing we said earlier about don't take your friends to your favorite places? Yeah. It, 
This happened at about 10 restaurants <laughs> in the first year. This about is true. About 10 restaurants. So then a couple years later, a friend of ours said, I don't believe you have restaurant karma. I'm going to take you to a restaurant. I've never been to this restaurant before. There's nothing preconceived. We're just going to go into this restaurant. So we went in. I ordered a burger and some potato chips. He ordered a burger and some potato chips. Our plates came out. We're sitting there. I started to eat. I realized a problem. I said, now, let me know. Did I give her a glare? Was I hostile? What did I do to deserve bad service? And he goes, you haven't gotten bad service. And I lift up my potato chips and there's somebody else's mashed potatoes and turkey slices underneath the potato chips. My burgers are sitting on top of potato chips. I don't even lift to see what's underneath the burger. It's a dirty plate, not just dirty. It still had the food <laughs> from the last person underneath the potato chips. If you ever want to have a great experience going to any dining establishment, take this person with you. You're going to have fun. It'll be entertaining. And ask, ask you don't Gloria need a portion. About, ask Lorianne about the cockroach and the jello. Yeah. Well, our favorite Chinese buffet. Was. Was. Okay, so. This is literally a cockroach in the jello. It was a real thing. It happened. It happened. They took seven dollars off the total tip because it was dessert. Or the total tax. You already ate your food. This is just dessert. Yeah. So becoming a regular is about more than just finding a restaurant you like. It's about finding a restaurant that your karma jives with. And if you're not finding a restaurant, chances are you're the reason you're not finding a restaurant or a grocery store or a car repair place that fixes your tire. Or, or any anything that you would normally visit. Yeah. Bookstores. Bookstores. Gun stores. No. <laughs> no. Knife stores. Okay. That covers pretty much the perfect model and the mutually exclusive. Because, yeah, we're there. Yeah. And yeah, we're at the 20 minute mark. Yeah, well, we still have decolonization is like trying to go plastic free or zero waste in finding a perfect place. Finding a perfect place that's open and accepting. Any place you go to, picture your most vulnerable friend visiting and you need to go and sit for a while while they're having a three clean Xbox breakdown. That's the reason to be a regular because if you show up with somebody having a crisis, they'll put you in the corner, keep your coffee cup full and leave you alone. And if you're not a regular, they want that table free. If they don't know you tip, they want that table free. Right. So picture. <sighs> um, for an example, we mentioned the clergy thing. I used to do uh, a fair amount of my my clerical counseling in a particular restaurant cafe because we had a long standing relationship there, and I could spend hours hours with a with a person covering things, and it was peaceful, it was it was friendly, it was safe. And it was because we had that working relationship as being a regular. A regular. Same with I do tarot card readings and I do life coaching. And having a place I can go to, yeah, I can go to almost any Denny's. You run the chance of running into somebody who thinks tarot cards are evil and awful. Or that gay people are even evil and awful. Any of those things. Any of those things. Um, being a regular someplace, I know I can take them. Even though I already said don't take your friends to places that you like because they might ruin it for you, you, and this is another reason for not moving in, you still need to have other options, but you can't go into a place you don't know if you need to counsel somebody because it could be the wrong place to be. You know? And if it's a place you have a relationship with, you know it's going to be okay. There's a place out in Lincoln City that I won't name that the chef, who's also the owner, will come out every now and then, and he has Waffen SS tattoos. And Atomic, what is the... Uh, Adam Waffen. Adam Waffen tattoos. He's got Nazi tattoos. We went there once. The waitress was like, Hi! Did you need to get seated? And we were like, Yeah! And we should have walked out. Yeah. We should have said, no, we're looking for an ice cream cone. Okay, the case is over there. And walked out. But I was tired and we were hungry and I was kind of curious as to why. And yeah. he made it clear that he thought we were not white enough to be in his restaurant. Yep. He he walked past four or five times. 
he went back, he took off his pants and put on shorts so we could see the, the tattoos on his calves. He took off his shirt until he just had a, a tank top on. He walked by our table probably 10 times. Had conversations with other tables and just no pleasant. Yeah. Like, hey, how about them Raiders type of thing? So the, every other yep. table but us, and every single time everybody went quiet and looked That's at like, us for a minute. Message received. Yeah, we won't be back. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Don't worry. Nothing to worry from us. Okay, so decolonizing. Ain't nobody here but us chickens. Decolonizing is about taking away that Western perspective of everything safe and understanding that I have friends I can't take into certain places because they won't be safe. That's part of decolonizing to me. I don't know. It is. It's just everything Everything is a potential danger. You know, potential dangers you find safe havens. Safe havens are something to be protected and cherished. Yeah. That's most of that. Yeah. Decolonizing is also don't go to... Okay, there's one Chinese restaurant in Lincoln City that uses a sing-song name as if you have a bad Chinese accent and has a white person's name on the billboard, does karaoke every Friday, and has a whole bunch of, of pickup trucks in the parking lot all the time. This is not a Chinese restaurant. It's not one we're going to go into. Just, just I don't we get want, enough. I don't want to find out if the chef actually knows how to cook yeah. Chinese food. There's enough visual warnings from the exterior of the place to warrant. Yeah. Let's let's try another one. We have other choices. And then there's Mazatlan in. I usually like Mazatlan restaurants, but the Mazatlan in Lincoln City. Every single time we've pulled into that parking lot, a customer has let us know that that they don't think we should be going in. Um, tried to run us over once. Yep. Made rude no comments. problem. We'll go somewhere else. Yeah. Got told I was awfully tall for a wet back. <laughs> anyway, we digress a bit from the subject of... No, it's, it's still within the subject of decolonization. Okay, that's true. Restaurants are a Western concept. Farmer's market is not. We... food trucks. We do 90% of our eating at food trucks or farmer's markets or small groceries, private gro privately owned grocers. Run in, grab something. Our favorite thing to do is a small thing of cheese and something crunchy. Um, Super easy. Not or expensive. tamales. Tamales, tamales are, always are always good. good. You see a sign for tamales? Tamales! <laughs> our, our food problems are solved. When you see a sign for tamales. Okay, this is a, if we're on the road and we have a little little money to uh, spend, yeah, budgeted bucks. for this type of thing. Four bucks. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We um, so we don't eat that much in restaurants. We have a couple of grocery stores you go to. The example is you'll never be a w regular at Winco. You just won't be a regular at Winco. The local Roths over here, yeah. he's a regular. I've never actually been into it, but he's a regular. And I, I made really the decision, like that grocery store. I made the decision to not go in because he flirts. And we don't want to, to disturb that flirting pattern. We, we may have mentioned how that actually works, right? It really does help. I have a waddle. That's all right. I have a waddle. It's almost Thanksgiving. It's turkey time. Oh, hurt you. I got the knife over here somewhere. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much it. Yep. Um, we're going to absolutely stick to one a week and try to throw in a second one on Saturdays, but there's no promises on the Saturday. Right, we're going to try and do some tutorials on, on yeah, the... Yeah, we had talked about trying to set up to do coffee tonight yeah. and just didn't quite get to it. We got thrown for a loop with the car problem. It I was a it. surprise. Yeah. But things are okay now. It's all right. So we're doing a nice little one here on being a regular, which is yeah. what the car situation is what brought this up. Because he's a regular at that shop because he's talked to them in passing, just you know, chatted with them, chatted them up. Something that could have been an $800 problem became a $42 problem. And yeah, or $68, yeah. whatever it was. Negligible. We'll say negligible. It was the grocery budget for the week. It's a fun word to say. It's got less. It's a little, little my, less. My current doctor, A, doesn't think that there's anything wrong with my voice, even though everybody can hear that I'm losing my voice talking after 30 minutes, but wants me to go on to a whole food, raw food diet because she did not listen when I said I have stomach problems. And I don't mind that the grocery budget's gone because that's one more week of beans and rice and rice and beans and rice and beans and beans and rice, baby. Always a good food. Yep. Anyway, 
That and somebody gave us a, a Chuck Roast to make pot roast with tomorrow. We're going to give that a shot, too. Yeah, Chuck Roast and, and beets. Uh, we're going to make a, a beet pot roast. We might do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's too close to Borsk. <laughs> we want to thank you for coming along again on our fun adventure here. We're really enjoying sharing our lives with you. And, and he spoke a little bit more this time, right? I'm working on it. We'll do more. When we do some of the tutorials, I'll be happy to share some of my old my old skills okay. with you guys and see if you like it. If you don't like it, yeah, let me know. Okay. All right. Push, Power button. Push the button. Where is it? There it is. Oh.